Don't laugh. This is the best camera holder that you can find for the money. And I'll show you why in just a little bit. But first, the intro. Okay, we're back. While I'm putting my deer out, I'm going to explain to you why this goofy apparatus is better than anything you could possibly mount on a bow. Shortest answer, acceleration, and acceleration is force, shocks. There's no way that you could have a bow powerful enough to kill a deer that isn't going to produce some kind of a shock like this on the camera at the moment of release. I don't care what bow it is, crossbow, longbow, compound bow, recurve bow, Asian bow, if they've got more than 40 pounds of force on them, that when you let go, huh, that camera moves towards you and there's no hiding it. There's no avoiding it. There's no escaping it. You might be able to damp it out. But ultimately, that camera is going to do weird things as it accelerates away from the bow and you're going to miss the shot. What's the best way to actually get the shot? Put the camera up here on your head. Your arm, all of the fluid in your arm, those linkages have a way of doing something called decoupling. They decouple the acceleration in the bow from being transmitted into some kind of equal acceleration in your head. Instead, you get virtually nothing. The head stays steady. So let's go test this out. Let me put my deer down. Okay, I'm now strapped into my head. And if I look here, let's go look at something obvious first, like like that now i know where to look i'm looking at the rear of the camera right now and i can see that white quiver out of my left eye so i know that's where i gotta look when i need to look up at the viewfinder let's go take a couple of shots i'm technically in a different range i don't even have to take plus you seem pretty good so i'm not worried All right, here goes. I'm looking over there at my deer, and now you can see it, and I know you can see it too. Let's go take a few shots. I'm going to shoot through the weeds here a little bit. I get to go out in two weeks. I get to go out on the 28th and the 29th. I'm super excited. Plus, my deer stand is almost ready. Five-step method, guys. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, draw back under your chin. Step three, look down the left side. Hmm. My head's turned sideways a little bit. I gotta do something about that. My head, right now I'm looking at the, the bag, but my head is not turned that way when I'm shooting. My head is turned like this. And I'm not positive that you guys are gonna be able to, to see what I'm looking at. So does this control, this control, this little unit, in fact, doesn't have the ability to twist. So what I'm gonna to have to do is actually hold it a little bit on the side of my head like that. Okay, let's give that a try. Stepping up again. Step one, choose my gap. Step two, draw back under my chin. Step three, Look down the left side of the string, step four, tip of the arrow right on that sweet spot. Lower left quadrant, step five, small motion release. Very nice shot. You heard a little rattle. That's, that's this old crappy uh, holder that I don't want to use anymore. Let's take two more shots and then go and check, see how we're doing. I'm gonna shift over a little bit. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, look down the left side of the string. Step three, <laughs> step two, anchor under your chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow right on that sweet spot. Step five, small motion release. Talking too much. I couldn't actually hold it that long. Let me be a little quieter and shoot this time. Same spot. Step one, choose your gap. Two anchor underneath the chin, three left side of the string, four tip of the arrow on the target, step five. Much nicer. Let's go take a look at all that. 
and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna pull the camera off and show you guys what you actually look like to me. I'm wearing this camera on the side of my head. Uh, the holder, rather, on the side of my head. <sighs> Not gonna work. I gotta figure out a way. Yeah, I guess it does work. I just would have liked it in the front of my head and tipped sideways, not the whole thing shifted sideways. But uh, this is my first couple of shots. Not bad, let's go try again. All right, try one more. Rotating this a little bit, trying to understand where I'm gonna carry this, where I'm gonna wear this headband if it's not gonna be right over my front of my forehead. We're taking two shots again. I've got one that seems to have escaped. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, draw back under your chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, look at the sweet spot. Tip of the air right on the target. Step five, small motion release. Looks pretty good. I got to keep turning my head sideways so you guys can see that. I'm, but the, the, first, the first thing I want to do is turn and face it forward. Step one again, choose your gap. Step two, draw back under the chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, tip the arrow on that sweet spot. Step five, small motion release. Let's go take a peek. Then I gotta figure out what happened with that arrow. It's like I got a, it's like I got an honest to God ricochet. I hit low. Did I hit a rock and it went somewhere? Those are pretty good. Anyway, what you guys are going to see from this particular camera is a complete isolation between the vibration, the shock that passes out of the bow and into my arm, and by the time it passes into my arm, into my body, up the neck, into my head, and into the camera, it's been so, what's the word, attenuated that you hardly feel anything. No big vibration like this. So you get to see the shot. These units, God, I think I picked this up at five below, guys. Five bucks for this headgear. So it might be something that you want to pick up, put it in your backpack, and carry with you. Worst case scenario, best case scenario, you use it and it works. Worst case scenario, at least it's available if your first choice somehow fails you. This is Mark Vogt with Voltland Outdoors. Only one more week to go and I get in the woods. See you out there. What do you think, Freckles? Yes? You like it? Do you like my headband? Give it a thumbs up. Yeah. Overall, we just came back from the archery range, and the big question is, which one worked better, the one that mounts on the bow or the one that mounts on your head? And the obvious answer, guys, you saw it with your own eyes. If you watched my previous video where I tried not one but two different bow-mounted mounts, bow-attached camera mounts, um, they both suffered from the same shock and unpredictable results where the camera was pointing after this, the, the release. And on this one, almost instantly, right after the shot, even, even when I was aiming the camera badly, that I needed to adjust the headgear just a little bit, you still could, he had no trouble seeing the bag through the whole shot. You saw the arrow go into the bag. So this is what I'm gonna be going in. I'll be practicing seeing just how low I can actually put it where it's not blocking my view because the lower I go, the more I can see the, 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 the viewfinder and actually look up there and see where the camera is pointing. And that's useful. That's it. This is Mark Vogt with Voltland Outdoors. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. We'll see you out there.